All right, here is all the new material of lesson 14. So pay close attention. Let's see if I can bring this closer because you are going to need to pay attention. Ready? Types of coordinates. There are actually three types of coordinates, but you have only been introduced to one so far. So the first type of coordinate that you've been introduced and it, you've already seen is called Cartesian coordinates. And I'm going to make sure I spell this nice for those of you who aren't going to attempt the video. Now let's go over Cartesian coordinates. They are x comma y. Right? That is how we write Cartesian coordinates. And they're on an x and y axis. You've seen this before. But this measures how far across and how far up and down a point is. So for example, 12, 5, I would graph that. Right, I would go over 12 and up 5, and so my point would be here. I'll move that a little over so it matches my drawing. Okay, so that's a review of a Cartesian coordinate. You've seen it a million times, right? This distance here is 12, and the distance down is 5. So that is review. Now we're going to move into polar coordinates, okay? And um, before I do, we need to talk about, well, I'll do that when we get to polar coordinates. So the next type are called polar coordinates, and they look completely different. So this is going to be R, and then we write our angle theta. Now, let's go back to Cartesian. It's how far across, which is your x, and how far a point is either up or down, which is y. Polar coordinates are totally different. This measures how far a point is away from the origin and the angle formed and the angle formed by your, I guess you could call it your hypotenuse and the x-axis. So it's the angle formed um, from your x-axis. I'm going to highlight this, and then I'm going to show you what I mean. So, for example, in the same way, let's say I show 12, 5 again. So here is, let's say this is 12, and this here is 5. So when they say r theta, they're talking about the distance from this point to the origin would be r, and the angle formed between this terminal side and the x-axis, here's your x-axis, is theta. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. You can think of r as your hypotenuse, um, but you're looking at this triangle here. So, um, to find, if I wanted to write this in polar coordinates, I would be looking for r. Right, and I know that this is 5, I know that this down at the bottom is 12, so 12 squared plus r, whoops, 12 squared plus 5 squared would equal r squared. Okay, simple math, but I'm, I'm putting my polar coordinate of 12, 5, my Cartesian, sorry, into polar, just to give you a heads up. So this gives me... 144 plus 120 plus 25, I would get 169 equals r squared. So r equals 13. 
Now to find theta, right? In order to find theta, I'm going to use my inverse relationship. I know that I have the opposite and I have the adjacent. So the tangent inverse, my opposite is 5, my adjacent is 12. So I would enter that in my calculator, the tangent inverse of 5 divided by 12. And I got theta equals 22.6 degrees. So I would say that this is R of 13, that's the distance from the origin, and the angle formed is 22.6 degrees. Now, the crazy part is there are four possibilities. of polar coordinates. And here's why. And I'm going to go over angles. Positive angles move counterclockwise. And negative angles move clockwise. For example, this would be a positive angle and this from the x-axis would be a negative angle. Now, I'm always counterclockwise from x-axis well, from the positive x-axis, and this would be count. This would be clockwise from x-axis. We start. We always, always, always start at the x-axis. So, <laughs> this is kind of crazy, okay? But there are going to be four possibilities for theta. Okay, so this is one version. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky. I now have to look at this um, differently. So I know that I, so this is 13. I know I have another possibility. So if I extend this out, we found the first possibility. We found from here to here is 22.6 degrees. The other possible um, from here would be the negative version. If I went, that's counterclockwise. Clockwise would give me my negative angle. Okay, and my negative angle would be the difference between that full circle and theta. So if I know theta is 22.6, then I know this here is um, 22.6 minus 360. Okay, so 22.6 minus 360 degrees and this here is negative 337.4 degrees. So these are two possibilities for theta for polar coordinates because we didn't mention whether this terminal side was formed by going counterclockwise or if it was spun around clockwise. So we have to account for those two possibilities. Now the other part is kind of crazy. Um, that th it is possible if I was to back it up and have another R, and we would call the, I, the, it usually says backed up. And so it's possible that I could be in quadrant three. Because um, from here, I'm measuring from the positive side of the x-axis, and for this one, um, think of it as if I went from the negative side of the x-axis. So there are two other possibilities, and that's down here. This would be your negative, this would be, this is 13, this is negative 13. Now, we are always measuring from the positive x-axis. So I'm measuring from this axis here. So I'm looking at, if I go counterclockwise, that's my positive angle. So this here would be 
um, a straight line is 180, so 180 plus 22.6. And then if I went clockwise, that would give me my negative angle. So that would be 180 minus 22.6. But I know it's negative because in the direction I moved it. So you don't always have to get a negative value in your calculator. The point is, is that if I move clockwise, I know it's negative. And if I move counterclockwise, um, I know it's positive. So those are the four versions in polar coordinates. And I know that's kind of crazy. The last type, I told you there were three types of coordinates. And the last type is much easier. It's just a different way to write it. And we call them rectangular coordinates. And rectangular co coordinates are written like this. It would be your x value and then vector i plus your y value and vector j. So these are your rectangular coordinates. So it's just a different way to write it. It's really not that hard. So if I had 12, 5, then I would write that as 12 uh, vector i plus five vector j. Super simple, it's just another way to write it. If I had um, negative three and negative two, then that would be negative three vector i minus two vector j. So this should be the represent the value of y. If I had six is zero, this would be 6 vector i, and there's no need to write plus 0j. It would just be 6i, 6 vector i. So that is what um, rectangular coordinates represent. I'm now going to jump into 14 point d because this is converting from one um, pair of coordinates to the other. All right, so here you go. We're going to convert from one to the other. And so the, in the first few, and I don't know who cares what number. I'm going to just start with number one. Convert rectangular to polar. And we're going to give all four versions of the polar coordinates. And so you'll get more practice from what I did earlier. So here we go. I have negative 7.08 vector i plus 4.2 vector j. So just review, that means I'm plotting the point negative 7.08 and 4.2. Okay, I like to draw pictures. Um, I'm going to draw a picture of point. So let's see here. I need, right, ne I'm, just, I'm just approximating, negative 7.8 up to 4.2. So let's say this is 4.2 and this right here is negative 7.08, right? I am going to draw, this is my terminal side. Remember, we measure everything from the x-axis, so all measurements are going to come from here. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to find r and theta, okay? So r squared equals negative 7.08 squared plus 4.2 squared, okay? And then we're going to solve. I get, um, I didn't even, like you guys can do that, uh, 7.08 squared plus 4.2 squared. I get r squared equals 67 point, um, keep as many decimals as possible, 
So r equals the square root of 67.77, which I got 8.2. And I'm going to keep this one, the 100. So right away, I know there's four versions. I know there's, if this is 8.23, And if I backed it up, that would be negative 8.23. So I have two versions. I have 8.23 and positive 8.23 here. Then I'm going to have the negative versions, negative 8.23 and negative 8.23. Okay? So now let's find theta. And theta is the angle formed between the terminal side and your x-axis. So theta must equal the tangent inverse. Opposite would be 4.2. So 4.2 divided by negative 7.08. So the tan, ver tan inverse of 4.2 divided by negative 7.08, and theta equals negative 30.67, I'm going to put 68 degrees. Okay, so yes, it is important that you put the negative, and we'll go over this because tangent is negative in certain quadrants, so it's really important that you put that side in there. So let's start measuring angles from this side, okay? So I'm going to measure the positive angle. So the positive angle has to be started from the positive side of x. So I need to find this angle here. So 180 minus 30.68, and I got 149.32 degrees. Now I have to do the negative angle, so that would be from the positive side of x-axis to the terminal side. I know that this here is 180, so I would be adding the 30.68, and that gave me, um, and that number, that is the negative angle, so negative 210.68. Now let's talk about that. When I added these, I didn't get a negative number but it's because I went in the clockwise direction that I know it's negative. So you might not get a negative in your calculator. You have to know positive angle, negative angle. So notice neither of them had the answer of 30.68 because angles are measured from the positive side of the x-axis going counterclockwise and positive x-axis going clockwise. So now I'm going to find, if I batch that up, I'm going to find these two. And so I have to go from the positive angle, right, would be from here to here. The negative angle would be that way. Now let's talk about these are vertical angles, right? So if this is theta, so is this. So if I wanted to find the positive version, I would do um, 360 minus that 30.68. And so if I subtract that out, I got 329. 32 degrees. If I wanted the negative version from here to here, I already know what that is. That's theta. So this is the only one that actually got the answer that we found for theta. So these four right here are your answers. Woo! I know. I know. I know. So we're going to do one more. And then we'll move on to the other form of converting. So we're going to convert four point eight vector i minus three vector j to polar. And I want all four versions. Okay. So I'm going to draw my picture. This time, 
four, this is, think of it as 4.8, oops, and negative 3. So that would be, this is 4.8 down 3. So let's say I put it here. It doesn't have to be accurate, okay? And I'm going to form my right triangle. So I know that this is 4.8, this is negative 3, this is R, that's theta, there's your 90 degree. Super helpful if you draw a picture. So to find R, R squared equals 4.8 squared plus a negative 3 squared. So add those up, take the square root, and I get the square root of 32.04. So R equals, I got 5.66. So now I'm going to find theta. Um, theta equals the tan inverse. My opposite is negative 3. My adjacent is a positive 4.8. So theta equals tan inverse of negative 3 divided by 4.8. Whoops, I entered that wrong. Thankfully, I caught it before I tell you what the right answer is. And I got negative 32 degrees. So let's set up our four versions. I'm going to have two that are positive. And I'm going to have two that are negative. The negative one would be formed with this line here. So I know that this would be the negative 5.66, and this here is the positive. Okay, so I'm going to start with the line they started with. I'm going to do the yellow first. So if I measure, remember a positive angle would move counterclockwise from the x-axis. So positive angle would go from here to here. So that would be 360 minus the 32 degrees. And that would be 328 degrees. The negative angle would be clockwise from the x-axis to your hypotenuse, which we already found that would be theta. So this is negative 32 degrees. So when you do these in pairs, these are both positive. These, okay? Now I'm going to do the two for the red line. I'm going to have a clockwise, counterclockwise, or you can do the counterclockwise, clockwise. Up to you. So these will be represented by the line I backed up to. I know that vertical angles, if this is theta, this is theta. So I'm first going to find my positive angle. So that would be 180 minus 32 degrees, which is 148 degrees. And this here, your, um, your negative, which is clockwise, would be 180 less 32 degrees. Now, I'm not going to get a negative number, but I know that since I'm moving clockwise, it's negative. So 180 plus 32 212 degrees. So these right here are my answers. All right. Can you believe this was all in one lesson? I know, crazy. So the last type of conversion is to now go from polar to rectangular. So you're going from r theta to x i vector plus y j. Okay, so we're going from polar to rectangular. So I'm going to do two with you. And hopefully you'll understand it from there. So we're going to convert 42, which is remember represents r, and theta is 138 degrees to rectangular.
So here we go. Now draw a picture, okay? Draw a picture. If it helps you. So they're saying that from here to here, I'm approximating is 138 degrees, and that this right here is 42. Why did I write degrees? Sorry. And that this right here is 42. So draw this. We're looking, and that should be a straight line, and you can make a bigger picture. We have to find the x value and the y value. And take a note of where we are. Oh, oh my goodness, I have that totally backwards. I'm a loser. <laughs> this is the x-axis, <laughs> and this is the y-axis, y. So take a look at where we are. So let's start. Um, I'm gonna find, I have to find this angle here. So I'm gonna redraw this. I'm looking for x and y, and this angle here is going to be 180 minus 138, which equals 42 degrees. Now that's just a coincidence that the, the angle and your hypotenuse are the same. And I know that this has a length of 42. So I'm going to use my sine and cosine. So I'm going to find x first. So the cosine of 42 degrees equals x over 42. So 42 times the cosine of 42 equals x. So I got x equals 31.2. Now, it's on the left. So x is a negative 31.2. See? Because x's are negative. Some things you have to fill in because you know their location. Now let's do the sine of 42 degrees equals y over 42. So 42 times the sine of 42 will equal y. And I got y equals 28.1. And based on the location, y is positive. So my final answer is negative. We write x first, 31.2, vector i, y is positive, so plus 28.1, vector j. Our last one. Convert negative 15 is r, and your angle is negative 335. So really think about this one. That's negative. So it must be the backed up R. So here's my picture. Um, a negative 335. So negative 335 would be, let's say here. Okay, so this backed up would be the negative 15. So, I would then find this missing angle, so this is 25, so I know that this is 25, and I'm looking for y and x. So I know that was confusing. So negative 335 would be here. This would be positive 15, but they're referring to negative 15. And I know that feels counterintuitive, but that is where we are. So I'm looking for y and x. So let's start with x. x would be the cosine of 25 degrees equals x over 15, or you can put negative 15. It's really up to you. Either way, you're going to know it's a negative. Um, so it might be helpful um, for you to put that. It's up to you. Um, 
you can put that. So then negative 15 times the cosine of 25 degrees would equal x. And so I got x equals negative 13.6. The sine of 25 degrees would equal y over negative 15. So negative 15 times the sine of oops, 25 will equal y. And I got y equals a positive 6.34. Okay? So I'm going to write this x first, negative 13.6j, or i, sorry, plus No, this, sorry, this came out negative. Um, my bad. Minus 6.34 vector j. And I'll rewrite this. For homework, I'm done. Um, come on in. For yeah. homework, um, oh, I don't know where he is. For homework, you're going to skip. 14, 22, 24, and 30. I know that's a long one. Oh, sorry. I should circle that that is your answer. So, welcome. Welcome to Trig.